Reimagining Impact in the Growth Era. That's our first session in this segment. This is a fireside chat with Frank J. Bisignaro, President and CEO of Fiserv Inc. Frank is also the member of the Board of Directors of Fiserv, a global leader in financial services and payments technology, solutions for financial institutions, businesses, and consumers. Prior to joining Fiserv, he served as the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of First Data. Chairing the session is Vain Bulambu, Vain Ulambu, Executive Director and President, Global Markets, Mindtree. In his role, he is responsible for formulating Mindtree's strategic decision and accelerating digital initiatives for clients with an aim to strengthen our leadership in technology innovation. It's over to you, Venu. Take it away. All right. Uh, thank you, Shreya, for a very nice introduction. Um, hello, everyone. Um, Frank, thank you for taking time, uh, you know, to join this panel discussion. Um, you know, it's really a, uh, exciting times uh, when we look at uh, the role of technology. Um, you know, its impact, uh, especially in what we call as the next growth decade. Um, you know, I'm 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 really honored, uh, you know, to be part of this conversation and 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 take your views. Uh, broadly around three themes uh, in terms of, uh, you know, how the tech and especially, in, you know, the fintechs have played the context in the overall financial services ecosystem. Uh, so we'll talk a bit about partnerships, uh, you know, acquisitions and how to assimilate that at a faster pace when things are changing, um, you know, very dynamically. Uh, and second is we'll, we'll talk about, you know, how do we still keep the ESG goals uh, consistent uh, you know, uh, especially when you have to, uh, you know, adopt technology within the system, or when you deal with the fintechs as part of your ecosystem, and and the role of fintechs in 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 democratizing uh, the financial services more universally across different geographies and, you know, different uh, sections of workers and so on, uh, and lastly, um, you know, the most critical aspect which everyone are talking about across the industry is, uh, you know, the how do we make sure that the talents are. Um, you know, are, are hired, um, you know, retained, and most importantly, offered uh, a career path in the context of the new generation. Uh, so I really look forward to the discussion over the, la you know, the next, uh, you know, 20 minutes or so, Frank. Um, and, and, and it's a very interesting time as well, uh, you know, when we look at, you know, the fintechs are, uh, you know, not only coming as a sort of a competition to some of the existing financial services, uh, but most of the time, they're actually offering capabilities which bridges the gap in in delivering financial services, uh, you know, to the clients universally and increasingly uh, across all forms of markets, both emerging markets as well as uh, the developed mar markets. And uh, and if you look at in the current times of uh, accelerating change that's happening around us, um, you know, there is also an increased adoption on how the consumers are are, are changing their behaviors with regard to their interaction with financial services. And thereby, you know, we have seen a significant demand uh, with regard to the digital adoption, uh, digital implementation, uh, you know, to make it more secure and, and, and most importantly, make it more inclusive uh, digital finance. Uh, given that uh, as, a, as a context, Frank, uh, if I might just open up, uh, you know, to get your perspective, uh, both on the uh, opportunity that lies ahead of us, uh, leveraging technology and the disruption uh, that it does bring in, you know, uh, m m positive disruption most of the times, but it does bring, uh, you know, aspects of change management and so on. So any opening comments, Frank, uh, from your perspective with regard to, you know, you know what I call as a tech in a decade or a shaping the, the next decade, uh, leveraging yeah. technology? Well, I think the uh, theme's very, very apropos. Uh, everything we do is tech enabled. It's embedded in our ways of life. Uh, not just from a commerce perspective, but from every perspective. And I, I am a deep believer that technology is a great enabler. It uh, enablement that allows disruption, allows change. I think today technology is speed, right? And disruption is happening at a pace we've never seen before. But this disruption's for good. The disruption is designed to improve. 
In many cases, it democratizes. In other cases, it improves efficiency and quality. Uh, so it has been a continuum that the world has always used technology as a disruptor. I think the speed is just being enhanced. I think its capability is being enhanced. I believe its reach is being enhanced. So to me, uh, it's a great topic, uh, a way of life. And uh, disruption in this case is designed to create opportunity. Right, no, absolutely. And you know, when you talk about technology, one is technology adoptions in the, you know, in the financial services ecosystem. And, and also it brings a dimension of, uh, you know, the new emerging roles of, of fintech. Uh, you know, uh, fintech is, you know, essentially has a sort of a dual relationship with uh, some of the big financial institutions, if I can say. One is they could offer a complementary capabilities to bridge, uh, you know, certain white spaces or gaps in the financial services set of offerings. Uh, in many cases, they're actually being disruptive uh, to the businesses itself, offering different business models, uh, you know, challenging the agility uh, dimension and actually becomes competition to the financial services. So how do you how do you handle, uh, you know, the, the great innovation that's happening around the fintech ecosystem? You know, do you see them as competition or collaborators or is it both? And, you know, how do you manage the, you know, the, the sort of a dynamics of both, uh, you know, being competitive as well as uh, collaborative uh, in, in, in the core financial services? In every in every aspect of life competition makes everybody better. Uh, in the case we're referring to here, I think it has a lot of cooperation, a lot of partnership. I think many times uh, the financial institutions and the startups are partnering on an opportunity. Um, so I believe this is another set of themes that we've seen through our whole life uh, tech enablement, uh, broadening horizons, financial institutions continuing to do better for their clients. Um, so any forces that come along, in this case, we're talking about fintech, that actually creates new opportunity. Larger institutions uh, today adopt, partner with. So you can partner, you can compete, you can bring to clients better outcomes. So I think all of it is about advancement. And I think it's also about a difference in the world we live, you know, moving it to more democratization, allowing it to be more embedded in our social systems also, and giving access. So the combination of fintechs and financial institutions and larger institutions all cooperating and competing at times, I think is very, very healthy for the ecosystem and has allowed tremendous advancements. And ultimately, the individual consumer will be the beneficiary. And that's I think really the objective, how to help the end user at everything they do. Sure, Frank, that's that, that's a great insight. I agree. Um, you know, I think, you know, a competitive skill sets or a competitive competency, uh, you know, does put, uh, <clears throat> you know, a good, you know, uh, put the companies on the edge to actually improvise or innovate uh, at much faster pace. Uh, glad to know that they're more of a collaborators than, uh, than, than competition for the, you know, for the core financial services companies. Uh, Frank, if I might just talk about, you know, your organization, Pfizer, in terms of, you know, uh, over the last few quarters, uh, you know, uh, you, you, you've been involved in quite a few partnerships, uh, acquisitions, uh, and so on. Uh, you know, how do you look that uh, in, the, in the context of, uh, you know, managing uh, both the cultural aspect uh, and, and also uh, keeping up with the change, um, you know, because, uh, you know, the technology disruption challenges some of the uh, traditional aspects of uh, organization integration, uh, you know, cultural synchronization um, and, you know, getting uh, the alignment and goals across, you know, very diversified distributed teams. 
Um, so, how, you know, any thoughts, Frank, that you can share with us in terms of how did you handle both the partnership dimensions as well as the acquisition? Well, I think uh, why don't we take acquisitions and I'd go back to uh, uh, Clover, a uh, business we bought uh, years ago. And today um, it flourishes inside this company. But we're very mindful in these startup acquisitions. And you could see us having bought FinZac, uh, Bento Box, Fan Labs, OnDot. To use a methodology which benefits the founders and Pfizer. And that, that methodology really says we are mm -hmm. going to use our scale and distribution and capability to allow that founder and that founder led company and us invest in it to be able to supercharge their growth. And um, yes, there are cultural um, issues, right. but I think we all can grow from the companies we acquire and the companies we acquire can uh, grow from us. We like to know the founders well. We like to partner with the founders. We want the founders to have a role inside the company because this was their lifeblood. And so, you know, you build a joint culture and uh, you keep the values always the same. But our ability to grow these, these startups into very integral parts of the company has, allowed, has been about allowing the startup and the founder to keep a lot of their original culture, us learn it, us integrate parts of it, us both grow from it and uh, be able to bring commerce to our clients. It's always about our clients. And so our acquisitions have always been about how do we serve our clients better? How do we expand the total addressable uh, market for our business in total? And uh, when, the, when that all aligns, you can get a very, very good outcome. And, you know, that doesn't mean that we don't announce a partnership with Deutsche Bank also and figure out how within Germany we're going to run a business together. So the way I like to, uh, is it's small and tall. Uh, you know, sometimes they're founder led. Sometimes they're very, very large financial institutions. Right. No, absolutely. Uh, look, I think um, there's never been a better time to leverage uh, the technology for the for the growth agenda, but it does come with its uh, you know own challenges in terms of how do you assimilate, uh, especially in the context of acquisitions and and, and partnerships. So glad to know, uh, you know, especially the point on how do you make the founders, uh, you know, part of the, your future roadmap and you know the future roles uh, in 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 the acquisition and you know and and I also heard about. Uh, how the fintechs can actually be a great partners, uh, you know, rather than seeing them through the lens of, uh, you know, a, a competition. So more often than not, then, you know, I, I understand they come more as a collaborators or, or, or complementing uh, capabilities to the, to the larger ecosystem. Uh, Frank, if I can just move on, uh, you know, to the next theme, which is, um, you know, uh, I, I think the tech, uh, you know, has also helped in democratization of uh, the services that a financial institution can provide, uh, whether it's in the consumer banking, wealth management, corporate banking, uh, trading, and you know, and so on. Um, you know, in in that context, um, you know, uh, where do you see uh, you know the role of uh, the financial services uh, institutions, uh, especially if you keep the ESG as the as the centerpiece agenda for the forward-looking organizations. Um, and then you need to have a larger ecosystem that is getting built around you in terms of fintechs, partnerships, acquisitions, uh, and, 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 and so on. So how do you see you know, the governance, uh, you know, the, the sort of a corporate governance playing a role in ensuring that the ESG agenda uh, you know, is consistent over a long period of time, and it is a very critical part of the decision-making uh, so thereby, it achieves the democratization aspect, it achieves the competitiveness aspect, but at the same time, you're ready for the future. 
Uh, any insights, Frank, from from your experience in terms of you know what what the companies needs to do in terms of strengthening their governance? Well, I think uh, ESG is a valuable aspect, and I do believe that uh, we serve communities. And the ability to serve those communities and improve the environment, uh, uh, improve the the way we approach issues from a social aspect. If you look at Pfizer, um, during the uh, height of the pandemic, we created a back to business program and went into communities uh, and and helped give grants and help business owners get back to business. It was very important. If you think about building facilities, we always try to build to a lead standard because that's environmentally friendly. Uh, a big, a big bent in going into our communities and serving them in schools. And it's all, how do we build the larger community? I believe companies are platforms to do good. Uh, and we got to serve our shareholders. We have to serve our clients. We have to have uh, serve our associates and have a great workplace, have a great experience for our clients, and we got to benefit our shareholders. But we have to serve the communities in which we operate in, and we have to give to those communities in a manner that we can help them thrive. So it's not only about writing out a check sometimes. It's more about how do we bring our human resources into those communities and help them grow. So I think it's uh, an important part of a company. I've always believed, you know, uh, large institutions or small uh, are platforms to do good. And we have this benefit of uh, a global platform, and we have to serve the communities that we, in fact, operate in. Yeah, absolutely. No, thanks. Thanks for sharing that thought, uh, Frank. Actually, if you look at you know, if you want to leverage the the technology in the next decade of growth or the decade, uh, you know, we can't talk. Uh, you know, we can't close this panel discussion without actually touching the topic of talent, and you know, how do we hire uh, the the new talent? Uh, how do we ensure that uh, you know they they feel uh, there is a sense of belongingness uh, to the company, uh, assimilate them in a new way of working, whether you call it as a hybrid working or you know the the future uh, models of working, uh, and and finally how do we retain them for the longer career path, uh, you know which most of the financial services were known for offering a, a very long career path to its employees. And there's been fantastic case studies, how people have stayed in the company for a very long period of time and, you know, have progressed significantly. Uh, but, you know, I think the technology and the tech talent has brought a new dimension in terms of, you know, the, the policies you need to have and, you know, how do you take care of those larger workforce uh, versus the non-tech workforce and so on. Uh, any insights, Frank? Uh, in, in, on the on the topic of talent hiring as well as talent management. Well, I think um, talent's the most important thing a company has. It's people, um, and and building a culture where they can feel uh, great about the brand, uh, feel comfortable in their position and believe that they're learning and growing daily. And uh, we, could, we could talk about the workplace dynamics, but I think in most environments, if you have those characteristics I just laid out, uh, people uh, have a high engagement model. And I think it's, it's important that we recognize the pandemic has moved many things, the digital agenda, the workplace agenda at a faster pace than maybe some were prepared for. But, you know, the definition of hybrid or the definition of flexible um, may have actually been around for a long time. And now it's crystallizing. And I think, you know, the most important thing is for people to believe that they can learn and grow and the place is providing them, you know, in many cases, as much as they're providing 
to the company or its clients. Um, retention, I generally feel, is uh, about an engagement model. It's about uh, did you first explain and come to understand the environment to that new uh, teammate that joins? And then are you assimilating them in a fashion they feel very, very good about? And then are they growing and learning? If you're growing and learning and rewarded uh, and, and you have a flexible work environment, then I think you're able to thrive as a company. If any one of the dimensions around the people platform is not performing at the level it needs to, then in fact, you're gonna have fraying at the edges. So commitment to people, job one, uh, and that drives commitment to shareholders and, and to clients also. Absolutely. Uh, great insights, Frank. Frank, as we, you know, firstly, thank you very much for taking time and doing this. My uh, pleasure. Uh, it's, you know, great insights across all the themes that, the themes that we spoke of. You know, just before we conclude it, uh, you know, I will leave you to leave the concluding comments. Um, you know, if I have to ask you, what do you look forward in in this financial year or in this calendar year of 2022? Uh, you know, from a technology parallels point of view, there are very new things that's coming up, whether it's crypto or you know, Web dot three, NFTs, and you know, and so on. So, you know, what are the one or two things that you look forward to? Uh, you know, in, in this year, Frank. Well, I, I'm, you know, I look to. Uh really what's going on in terms of uh, virtual reality. I think the adoption of that, I think the adoption of AI, uh, I think a further definition of how the world of crypto will evolve now, and we're excited to be engaged in it. Um, and continuing the digital transformation. And ultimately, you know, as we like to say, uh, moving money at the speed of life. And uh, how we help, how we help individuals, how we help uh, small businesses, and how we help financial institutions. So uh, this conversation has been all my pleasure, and uh, congratulations on everything you've done and achieved. And I'm grateful for you taking the time out with us. Thank you. Thank you, Venu and Frank, for a very engaging session to begin the afternoon's proceedings. FinTech has shown potential to close gaps in the delivery of financial services to households and firms in emerging markets and developed economies, and this need has accelerated during the present times, which has led to unprecedented demand to progress their transition to secure and inclusive digital finance.